Welcome to all. In the last session, we have understood the few basic concepts about marine insurance. Here, we are going to understand the principles of marine insurance and the various marine losses in marine insurance. First, we will discuss fundamental principles of marine insurance. Principles of marine insurance is also like any other general insurance principles. Dear students, I like to make you recall that the very very basic of all insurance that is both life and general is that the sharing of the loss of few by many. Let us see the principles one by one. Principles of utmost good faith. The contract of marine insurance is based on utmost good faith on the part of the insurer and insured. The insured should disclose all the material information relating to insurance before the insurer. If the insured misrepresent some facts or withheld some facts about the marine insurance, the insurer can avoid the contract. Similarly, if the insurer does not inform the subject matter of the insurance contract, then the contract can be terminated. Next, principle of insurable interest. In marine insurance, the insurable interest is very essential. The persons have insurable interest take marine insurance or the owner of the goods in his goods, the owner of the ship in his ship, the master and the crew of the ship have an insurable interest in respect of their wages. The shipping company in its freight, the travelers in other luggage and goods, the trustee in the trust goods, the reinsurers in his goods, a creditor who has advanced money on the ship or goods has an insurable interest to the extent of his debt. Next, principle of indemnity. Insurance company compensates loss but allows no profit out of it. It means that the insured will be compensated only to the limit of loss suffered. He will not be allowed to earn profit from marine insurance. The insurance company undertakes to compensate the insured in cash and not to replace the cargo or the ship. There is one exemption to the principle of indemnity in marine insurance. Some profit margin is allowed to be included in the value of the goods. This is based on the assumption that insured will earn profit when the goods reach at their destination. Next, principle of casa proxima. This is a Latin phrase which means proximate cause. It means that cause which in a natural and unbroken series of event in is responsible for a loss or damage. So, insurer is not liable to for any loss due to willful misconduct of the insured, for loss due to delay, for loss which are normal and due to natural wear and tear. Casa proxima is the cause proximate in efficiency and not necessarily the cause nearest in time. The cause which is truly proximate is that which is proximate in efficiency. The next principle is warranties. A warranty is that by which the assured undertakes that some particular thing shall or shall not be done, that some conditions shall be fulfilled or whereby he affirms or negatives the existence of a particular state of facts. Warranties are the statement according to which insured person promises to do or not to do a particular thing or to fulfill or not to fulfill a certain condition. It is not merely a condition but statement of fact. It is very necessary to follow all the implied warranties in case of marine insurance. If any of these warranties is not fulfilled, the other party may avoid the contract. These warranties may be oral or in writing. Now, let us see the two classes of warranty. 
Uh, one is legality of the venture. The venture should be legal. If a journey is illegal due to some cause, it will be relieved of the legal liabilities. So, the contact of the venture and its purpose must be legal under the law of insurance of the country and international laws. Next one is seaworthiness. It means a responsible fitness in all respects to survive the normal course of its proposed use. So, the ship must be seaworthy at the commencement of the journey. A ship is considered to be seaworthy if it has been completely repaired, the master and staff is present and there is sufficient fuel in the ship that it can face the routine sea perils of the sea. Non-deviation, a ship should follow the normal routes. If the ship deviates from normal routines without legal reasons, the insurer is free from responsibility. But prescribed route can be changed in certain exceptional cases. Next principle is principle of mitigation of loss. An insured must take and responsible care to reduce the loss that is maintain it. He must act as if the property was not insured. For example, if a ship is insured against sinking or fire, the insured must take all reasonable steps to keep the loss to the minimum. He is supposed to take all the steps which means of ordinary prudence would take under the circumstances. Next principle is principle of subrogation. According to the doctrine of subrogation, after the insured is compensated for the loss caused the damages to the property insured by him, the right of ownership of such property passes on to the insurer. If the damaged property has any value left or the lost property is recovered that cannot be allowed to remain with the insured because in that case he will realize more than the actual loss which is against the principle of indemnity. Thus, the doctrine of subrogation means in effect the substitution of the insurer in place of the insured as the rightful claimant of the rights possession etc. Some valid points may be noted in regard to subrogation. The insurer is subrogated to the rights of the insured only after he has settled the claim. The insurer has to excise such rights in the name of insured. The insurer is entitled to the benefit out of such rights only to the extent of the amount he has paid to the insured as compensation. If the insured receives any compensation for the loss after he has already been indemnified by the insurer from any third party, he holds the amount of such compensation as the trustee of the insurer. Then we will discuss on marine losses and its classifications. In the context of globalization, maritime transport is the backbone of international trade with over 80% of world merchandise trade by volume being carried by sea. Marine transport involves risks related with the perils of the sea. During voyage, there are number of perils in the sea. Some perils are insured against while some perils are not insured. The liability of the insurer starts if the damage has taken place on account of the perils insured and if the damages of the property has taken place with other perils against which the insurance policy is not taken. In that case, the insurer will not be responsible. Marine insurance can be broadly divided into total loss and partial loss. Total loss is further classified into actual loss and constructive loss. Partial loss is classified into 
particular average loss and general average loss. We will discuss on total loss. When the subject matter of the insured material is completely destroyed or lost, it is known as total loss. It can be actual total loss or constructive total loss. Actual total loss is when the subject matter is completely destroyed or damaged that it ceases to be a thing of a kind insured or when the insured is deprived of the possession of the subject matter which cannot be recovered such loss is called the actual total loss. Actual total loss occurs under some situations they are the subject matter is completely destroyed the subject matter of the goods are so damaged that it ceases to be a thing of the insured. The subject matter is destroyed and the insured is deprived of the subject matter. A ship has sunk and neither the ship nor the cargo can be recovered. It means that the ship and the cargo are completely destroyed. The ship caught fire in which ship and the cargo were damaged beyond repair. The cargo was damaged by the sea water in such a way that it could not be used for the purpose it was meant. In case of actual total loss, the insured is entitled to recover full amount of loss. But after receiving the compensation, the title of the goods passes on to the insurer. Any amount realized by sale of damaged insured goods will go to the insurer. Next, constructive total loss. A constructive total loss occurs when the ship or cargo is abandoned for certain reasons because its actual total loss seems unavoidable or when its subject matter cannot be preserved from its total loss by incurring more expenditure which would be more than its actual value. Suppose a ship has to run on a rock and is badly damaged. If arrangements were made to send other ship to save and bring it back and repair it. The total expenses involved will be greater than the value of the ship so damaged. In this case, the ship may be justifiably abandoned and will be deemed as a constructive loss. A constructive total loss will be where the subject matter insured is reasonably abandoned because its actual total loss seems unavoidable. The subject matter cannot be preserved from total loss because the expenditure incurred on it is more than the actual value of the subject matter. Note that in case of constructive total loss, the insured gives you notice of abandonment. It can be given orally or in writing. This notice surrenders its interest in the subject matter to insurer and can claim damage for total loss. Next, partial loss. When the subject matter of the kind insured is partially destroyed or damaged or lost, it will be case of partial loss. Partial loss is of two types. One is particular average loss, the other one is general average loss. Let us see particular average loss. It is defined as a partial loss of the subject matter insured caused by a peril insured against and which is not general loss. If some tins of refined oil are shipped and few of the tins are destroyed by sea water in the course of voyage, this loss will be known as particular average loss. A particular average loss is not caused voluntarily. Such a loss is entirely borne by the 
owner of the particular thing damaged or by his insurer. The particular average loss must satisfy some conditions. The loss should be accidental. The loss should be caused by a peril insured against. Only a part of the subject matter of the kind insured should have been destroyed or lost. Only a particular subject matter should have been lost or destroyed. Next, general average loss. A general average loss is one which is caused by an extraordinary sacrifice or expenditure voluntarily and reasonably made or incurred under special circumstances for the only purpose of preserving the common interest from impending peril. If damage or expenditure voluntarily incurred for the purpose of preserving all or any of the interest of ship, cargo, etc. A few examples of general average loss are a ship is overloaded and sinking. Some of the cargo is thrown out in the sea with the purpose to save the ship. It is the case of general average loss. Due to fire in the ship, water is used to extinguish fire. The water damages the loaded insured material. The loss of cargo is general average loss. A ship is standing at a shore and it becomes necessary to lighten the ship to get her off again. Therefore, the cargo was taken out in the boats and put back again after the ship. Uh, the expenses involved in it are reasonable as general average loss. The master of the ship thought if necessary for the safety of the cargo etc. to cut away the master of the ship. The loss caused to the ship owner is recoverable as general average loss. Some conditions are to be satisfied before deciding about a general average loss. That must be an exceptional situation. The perils must be real and not imaginary. Loss so voluntarily incurred least have resulted in the preservation of the ship and at least some proportion of the cargo. Sacrifice made should be prudent. The purpose should be to save the whole adventure. In this, we discussed on the principles and various marine losses. In the next section, we will take the next topics of marine insurance. Have a good day.